Hi, this is Scott Harden from SWHarden.com, and today I'm going to take the first steps into trying to hack a frequency counter I recently received from a friend down in Orlando. So let's take a look at the device. Here is the frequency counter, and I'll turn it on, and it is will start showing a frequency, and this is in megahertz, 9.88 megahertz. Now the output is from this permeability tuned oscillator. I wrote about this a few posts back on my website, but the concept is that I can screw the screw in and out and the frequency will change as I loosen it or as I tighten it. So that's the uh, basic concept of the frequency counter. Um, there's the output of the permeability tuned oscillator on the oscilloscope, just so you can get an idea of what's being measured. Um, there aren't a whole lot of options. This is a pretty simple oscilloscope. Uh, NSTEC model GFC 8010H. It's about $175 on Amazon.com and it doesn't have any computer connectivity. The back of it is just a straight power plug, nothing else, and we only have a few controls in the front. Uh, these adjust the period so I can add a little more resolution by giving it a one second counting time or ten seconds. If it does ten seconds, it takes a full ten seconds to count, but the advantage is we have tenth of a hertz resolution. There we go. Um, another thing it will do is instead of showing frequency, it will show the period, which is pretty nice. And then here are the units, nanoseconds. So that's pretty convenient. Pretty nice to have. So I'll switch it back to frequency, one second. And uh, my goal is to have this output data to a computer in the simplest way possible. So I'm going to take it apart and look what's inside and see what we might be able to interface to get this to a computer. Alright, I unscrewed these four screws and we can open it up. And it's actually a lot simpler than you might have expected. There's not a whole lot of circuitry here. So the main components are pretty easy to spot. Um, just to give you some orientation, here's the front again. Power obviously comes in through here, goes through the transformer. Uh, we have four diodes, so I imagine it's some type of bridge rectifier and a smoothing capacitor. Uh, here's an LM or some similar 7805 5-volt volt voltage regulator. A 10 megahertz crystal right here which is probably some sort of time base for the actual counter chip. Here's the main chip. This is a counter and it's I think the primary logic of the board. We have a small I think this is a NAND, like an inverting buffer chip. This is a small line driver. This is the input where the signal goes in. So we have some amplification here and then a line driver which turns it into nice square waves uh, with a minimal, uh, or with a very, very high input impedance, which means that whatever we hook up here doesn't really affect the circuit that much, but we're able to read it very strongly. After a little bit of wave shaping, the signal goes into the counter chip and then the counter chip takes information from these switches right here, such as the period and frequency and all of that, and it integrates that and determines what to display on the display. The display is passed through this ribbon to the front of the display and um, through the cable, pretty straightforward, and we've got a handful of pins. So I think the easiest way to interface this, we have two options. Number one, we try to look at the pins on the output of the chip and there is a pin, I think it's the 6th, 7th, or actually maybe the 8th pin, somewhere around there, that does seem to output a small burst of data. And I can see that on my analog oscilloscope, but because I don't have a digital recording scope or a spectrum analyzer, I don't really have the ability to tell what type of data is coming out of here. So as much as I'd love to use it, and it's probably pre-prepared data ready to use, I'm not able to utilize that. So I'm going to have to do a little more old-fashioned hack and try to interface the data as it goes between the microchip and the display. And I think if I can read this data, I can get the value of each character as it's being illuminated on the display. So I'll tinker around with it and I'll update you guys when I come up with something. Currently I have the oscilloscope hooked up to the output of the chip. This normally goes to the display, but instead of going to the display, it'll go to the oscilloscope. Let's make things easier. I'm going to plug it into the display real quick. So you can see we're back where we started. It's outputting frequency. So now I'll take it out of the display and I put a resistor to the oscilloscope right here and we're looking at some of the signals on the scope. Uh, so as you can see, this is a 
it gives you an idea of how quickly it's going by. It's not too fast to measure conveniently with a microcontroller. So we have some pulses. I imagine every time you see a little pulse, the character changes. It's a multiplex display, meaning only one character illuminates at a time, and it goes back and forth very, very quickly so your eyes see it as multiple characters. Um, I don't want to short anything out here, but I did notice this pin here is one of the data lines. You can see there's some binary encoded data, and every time the screen changes, the actual value changes. and that represents the numbers being transmitted. So I think if I can make a microcontroller record these, you know, up and down pulses, I can get a good example of, or a good, in, good assessment of what the value is on a particular pin. I found a couple of the pins that were noteworthy. Um, now there's another data pin, and you can see that changes every time the frequency changes significantly. That's probably not a very significant bit. It's not changing, but there's a little bit. Um, one of these was really interesting. Not that one. Yeah, this guy right here. So I'll slow it way down. And you can see it dips down every second. If I switch it to the 10 times a second, it dips down 10 times a second. I'll put it back to a 1 second reading. And I think this means that some data is being transmitted over this line while the pulse is low. So I'm not sure if I can find a pin that sends just the raw data one time every time it's updated. But this is where a logic analyzer would come in really handy. It would let me visualize the logic state of all of the pins at the same time and be able to view it on a screen so I could determine which pins to read and how to read them. So I might investigate making a small logic analyzer, and if that's the case, I'm sure that'll be a whole project in and of itself. But there's a good start and a pretty solid plan of how I'm going to actually take the measurements.